So Namishka, welcome and pleasant morning to every one of you. I'm extremely happy to be a part of uh, this very very important event. Not only for you but also for me, it is a much awaited uh, event. Why? Because I am standing here first to seek apologies from each and every one of you. Because I totally disappointed all of you in the month of November. And from that time onwards, I was really feeling restless. And today I am a bit happy that I am able to at least make some kind of a justifying presence today. And uh, please, please accept my apologies for having disappointed all of you in the month of November. It's just because of my ill health, I was not able to do anything. Now coming to today, I think uh, today is a very, very important day, not only for you, but for me very specially, because I'm totally excited to understand that one university that is present in one of the states of the country, and the name of the university is Doon University, which is just 15 years old university. It is joining hands with 175 year old Royal Society of Chemistry. And they want this kind of a linkage to be facilitated and catalyzed by an 82-year-old organization called CSIR on the 130th birthday of Shansharu Patnagarji. Today is the 130th birthday of Shanti, Dr. Shanti Sharu Patnagar. I think most of you, you as youngsters, may be aware or at least I would say you should be aware that what is the Indian Nobel Prize? It is nothing but Shanshan Bhatnagar Awards. So Shanshan Bhatnagar birthday, in my opinion, CSIR is celebrating in the premises of Dune University by joining hands with the Royal Society of India. And we are now opening a new chapter in the history of the country wherein academia is joining dare enough, bold enough, coming forward, putting all their efforts to join hands with the industry and they seek the nice coordination from the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, which is a great, great, I would say, the best coordinating effort. And I should really appreciate the Honorable Vice Chancellor of this university for this wonderful effort and initiative. I should really thank and specially thank Professor Arun Kumar. I think his tolerance level is very high. Whenever and he, I think he is a, he has put in tireless efforts in making sure that Kalisalvi is here in the Dune University and that this collegium series is getting inaugurated only by the DGCSAR. And I'm really thankful to you and to the entire university for having. I would say, you are celebrating CSAR through this particular event. My thanks are due to my two directors. It's a pleasant surprise to me. The moment they came to know that DG is here, they were really skeptical whether, whether DG will be available today or not. But the moment they confirmed it yesterday night, they made their presence also here. Friends, it is just to, to showcase. We are not here to just to show our muscle power or to say that CSAR is great. It is not that way. My young friends, please, please understand and take a message from the stage which was decorated by all of us. This itself gives a message that when academia wants to really create a linkage with an industry, in between you need a knowledge partner or a technology partner or a scientific hand-holding authority who could be none other than Council of Scientific and Industrial Research as on date, especially in the country, which is India. Because I would say once upon a time, educational institutions were really worried about how best they can really bring up children as very responsible citizens by means of importing the right choice of education. Once upon a time, it was thought that that is the one and only responsibility of the educational institutions. Similarly, industries were thinking that, yeah, they have to come up with some kind of a production or manufacturing or designs or devices by means of which they should be able to penetrate the market. That was their end. Similarly, the third category, the research organization under which we all find our identity, 
So we are all research organization representatives. We were also initially thinking that, initial days we were thinking that we have to come up with a number of new and innovative research ideas. We have to put them and implement it in the form of laboratory-based experiments. And the evidence-based data that is obtained from the experiments are to be put in the form of a documentation by means of which a proof of concept level should be achieved by the research organizations. So this is the kind of a limited responsibilities with which all three of us were working in the same country just a few years back. But now the situation has changed. Educational institutions are not meant for only importing education. No, my dear friends. Education for what? Once upon a time, after education, the students will be really seeking for employment. Now the situation has changed. There are two options now available in front of you. After you complete your education, either you can seek for a job or you can be a job seeker or you can be a job creator. So if you, most of the students these days, you want to become a job creator and when you want to create a job, your name is a, comes in the form of a startup or entrepreneur or MSME, whichever name, fancy name by means of which you want to call by yourself, you can just take the banner and you can just go ahead. Therefore, educational institutions are now having the or added responsibility that apart from giving education, to what extent I can make ready my human resource, my students, not only as responsible citizens of the country, but also as a person who can really take part very, very aggressively, vigorously, violently, actively in the economical as well as science and technology innovation related landscape of this country. That is the expanded vision. That is the expanded domain with which the educational institutions are now functioning and the educational institutions are expected to function like this. Again, big salutes to NAP. This NAP gives you one more freedom. Because friends, I used to always say, till 1947, we were asking freedom, freedom to think, freedom to talk. And we were all just worried about only freedom, freedom, freedom. 1947, India got independence and therefore we stopped talking about that kind of freedom to think and freedom to talk and freedom to write. Then we started thinking about freedom to get food for everyone, food for all, that became the slogan. Then we thought that employment to everyone. Then we said education to everyone. But now I think we have to really think about what is the kind of freedom with which you are made available to the country so that the country can make use of the fullest potential of you not only as a student but also as a startup or as an entrepreneur or as, a, or as an industry person or as a researcher. And therefore friends, this NAP gives you a lot of freedom to education also. So this is the new freedom you got. Freedom to decide about your education. If you want only the certificate, yeah, you can get the certificate. If you want to just go out of this one with a diploma, yes, you can go. If you want to go with a degree, you can go. If you want to go with a degree with honors, then also you can go. But whichever way you go out of this university, your goal is only in two different directions. Whether you are going to seek a job or whether you are going to offer a job to many people. So it is where this 15-year-old organization at the right time you have taken the right decision with the right choice of a combination of Royal Society of Chemistry and you have rightly took the help of CSAR also. Now after participation in this one, I along with my directors, we will try our level best to encourage, motivate, support, handshake and handhold this university in the coming days in as many forums as possible for financial support, technology development, as well as I would say for the 
science, technology and innovation related growth of this country. Friends, once upon a time, people were thinking that if the country is, if the country has to develop means it is the responsibility of the politicians or the national leaders. And sometimes people used to say that it is the responsibility of A to Z. But I would say mainly, mainly the responsibility lies in the hands of researchers, science, technology and innovators. We are the major shareholders. Whether India is going to succeed or not, it is in the hands of only we, those who are sitting here. If you just think about in what way we can do it, I think this is the best forum wherein we will just offer you the guidance, meaning is the Dune University through such colloquium series. They will invite many, many, many distinguished speakers from industries, from research organizations, and like the way it is told that now you have talked about only two partners, one is university and the industry. Truly speaking, it should be a tripatriate agreement. One is academia, the second one is research organization, and the third one is industry. Research organizations will do research and they will come up with a kind of science and technology related package in the form of a technology which is ready for implementation, ready for transfer. And we want somebody to implement it by putting their mind, heart, soul and energy. The moment I say mind, heart, soul and energy, it is applicable to only youngsters. So you are the package of the entire thing and therefore we need academia. And for you and me, like research organization and academia, we can travel up to a particular di distance, but to penetrate the market, we need the third interface, which is the industry. So the industry alone can really take our ideas, take our efforts, take all our, I would say, support and encouragement, and they can make it as a good package, which is a saleable package or which is needed for the society. Many a times, many a times I used to say that this industry is the launch vehicle for all the technologies to reach the society. Because even today the common man is having his access only up to market. Therefore, if you want to really touch the lives of the common man through your science and technology, you cannot go and directly talk to a common person Whereas, if you are able to reach the market, that is the connecting interface. So, if you are able to reach the market with your science, technology and innovation based package, it may be in the form of a product or a process or a device or an equipment, then you are able to touch the lives of the common man very, very directly. So, friends, very, very thoughtfully, I would say very meticulously, your Vice Chancellor, Madam, has planned it and please put your hands together to appreciate her initiatives and efforts. If at all every university and every educational institution and every academia in the country starts thinking in this direction, I think 50% of our problem is already solved, it is taken care of. Because even like the way I said, we from CSAR family also, once upon a time, we were working in silos, we were working in laboratories. Friends, you will be very, very amazed and thrilled. And it will be very, very interested. You will be interested to know that these days, our scientists are not only working in the labs, most of the time, and many of the scientists, they are working in land. Meaning is from lab to land, we have already translated and transformed our research. Therefore, what is our next target? Lab to land is over. Next is land to brand. Meaning is we have to penetrate the market with our product. So to penetrate the market with a kind of a branding, I already had a discussion with the leaders of Niti Aayog, the think tank of the country. Madam, please make a note of this particular point because you should also support me and both of us can really give a lot of positive pressure to the national leadership. That I just came up with a kind of a concept and we just named it as Technology Scale-Up Corridor. 
we just named it as TSC, Technology Scale-Up Corridor. Meaning is, we from research organization will be able to come up with any kind of a technology up to the technology readiness level. I do not know how many of you are aware of the terminologies like TRL and MRL. TRL is technology readiness level, MRL is manufacturing readiness level. So we from research organizations, we can push any technology, we can develop any technology up to the technology readiness level of four. But taking the technology from TRL 4 to 7 is a great, great task and it's a Herculean task. Meaning is, if at all you are having the proof of concept, you have to prove your concept at a particular scale, at a large scale, in different sizes, in different numbers, in different masses, and for its practical applications, its certifications, its suitability, acceptance in the market, eligibility. So all these points are to be taken care of and therefore moving from TRL 4 to 7 is a big, big task and many a times we researchers, we spend time which is equally that we spent to bring it from 1 to 4, same amount of time, sometimes even more amount of time is required to take it from 4 to 7. So it is where the industry's participation is very much essential. But the moment you push it to seven, industries will immediately take it. Therefore, they can very easily take it to the market and your science and technology will penetrate the market and you will see the light of the day in the form of its real-time application. Therefore, having this particular point in mind, I just came up with a kind of a simple roadmap and I also made few presentations also. Wherein I said in the country we should have minimum four technology scale-up corridors and one we have kind of identified which is Chennai, Tirupati, Bangalore meaning is Tirupati we have ICER as well as IIT and Chennai is a hardware hub, automobile hub and Bangalore is a software hub. So by putting together this software as well as hardware unique capabilities of the country meaning is taking the industries from these two places. If at all these IIT and ICER students, this is where I'm telling the energetic students, the knowledgeable students, the students who are bold enough to think, who are able to put in their all their time 24 by 7 with all kinds of positivity. So we expect that kind of a contribution from academia. And of course, CSAR is always a knowledge partner, always a technology partner. We will handshake and handhold this IIT and ICER students, those who are willing to come up with a kind of a startup kind of an initiative. We will help them and the industries will also give some kind of a funding. ICER and IIT will give land. We will offer our technology. So all three partners will give one from each side by means of which this triangular relationship will get a shape. This is the basic concept. So this idea got conceived a few months back and we got it deliberated in two, three forums. And I have submitted one kind of a small note to even to the level of cabinet secretary also. I'm sure that this will definitely take a shape, but friends, Without even waiting for the government of India to come up with that kind of an arrangement in place. Without even waiting for the national leadership and others to just approve it and give a shape to that. Why should we just get it started from our end? Why should we already give a kind of a shape? And as you rightly said, madam, this Anusandhan NRF is another platform wherein funding will definitely be available and therefore Whenever we want to get kind of a bigger funding support from ANRF, I think Dune University and CSAR can really make a kind of a partnership, working relationship, working agreements with the defined responsibilities. We can onboard few industries and then we can approach Anusandan NRF by means of which we will be able to get a lot of funding. I think that should be the ultimate goal of this Pilequin series by means of which in India we should come up with the first successful model 
and the first successful model should start from Doon University because we are getting this particular thing inaugurated on the birthday of Dr. Shantshan Patil. So friends, the success of this particular formula, the success of this particular arrangement lies not only in the hands of Vice Chancellor Madam and with me and with uh, the directors of CSR. It is in the hands of you as youngsters. We will also try our level best. We will put in our 100% efforts to scout for industry partners. And you please come forward with all your energy, time, your knowledge and your courage and positivity with the kind of educational support that is being offered in this university. So we three can really make number of changes by means of which the challenges, the so-called challenges of to, today, we can just change them into opportunities. So what it all is appearing as challenges today, I think we have to redefine them and we have to rename them as opportunities. We are ready from CSR's side. Are you ready from your side? Say yes or no. Yes. Thank you so much. So I think that should be the spirit from the Dune University side. Because it is not only the leaders, it is always the people, those who are really taking part in that one. You only will add value to that relationship. And I look forward that kind of a relationship should take place and we should continue to travel together. I think if at all we are able to come up with even one success story, one success story in next five years, I think that will be the starting point from which we can make series of success stories in the coming years. Even our space research organization, ISRO, our friends, our scientific team, they also started with single success story initially. Now with a kind of a gained confidence, every month, like a monthly sheet calendar, now they have given the calendar in such a way that this month we will launch A, next month B, next to next month C. So like they are now talking about series of success stories. So days are not so far off. You and I also can talk about month-wise success stories. But to start with, we need a one strong, robust success story. And therefore, we have to be fully geared and charged to just think about it, to work for it, and to demonstrate it in the near future. So friends, I just wish to say only one point to you before I move on to my little lecture. I think this lecture will not be boring. I will just to showcase certain things and I will just finish it. I will just say that we are now passing through the very, very important times, not only in the history of India, but also in the history of the entire globe. In my opinion, today it is very, very precious. Life is very, very precious. And the days are gaining actual and added momentum because of one reason. Why? Because whether it is a good thing or a bad thing, it is common to the entire globe. You talk about this global warming, you talk about this carbon related issues, whatever you talk about, whether it is a disaster related thing, whether it is a natural disaster, nature based disaster or man made disaster, anything related to in the form of difficulties or I would say disaster, everything is common to the entire globe. If at all something happens in India, all other countries cannot sit quietly. If it is happening today to India, these are not so far off. The same thing or similar thing may happen to them also because nature is making all of us to understand one fact that we have only one earth and therefore we have to live like one family because all of us are having only one future. Therefore to shape that particular future, the common future, it is the need of the hour, nature tells us and nature forces us, nature compels us that all of us should work together because whatever we do in terms of science or technology based solution, it is not only applicable to India, it should be applicable to the globe. When we were just talking in the room along with your Vice Chancellor, Madam was telling one word. Development, she was first talking about how best she can develop this university. Then she said, which is very important, not only in terms of country, 
but also in the whole world she used the word i was really really very happy because i always think and i always propagate it as a message that whatever you do whatever little science you do whatever small technology you develop that technology should be appreciated not only in india but it should be accepted in the globe that is where madam was telling it is not women development it is women led development madam was telling i'm just putting it to india we should forget about the days that india was a follower india should no longer be a follower we should be the leader we should lead science we should lead the global science we should lead the global technology we should lead the global innovation also therefore whether we like it or not whether we believe it or not the confidence on india from the other countries across the globe is such that they started believing that today india is the fifth largest economy and soon it will become the third largest economy but their leadership in science technology and innovation is going to be the the impeccable leadership not for so many years after 2024 it is going to happen within the shortest possible time the entire globe is believing that india is fully getting geared up to lead the global science technology and innovation and when the entire globe is believing should we not believe the same thing we have to believe let us believe let us realize let us understand let us tell to ourselves let us make our mind heart and soul to understand that days are not so far off india is only going to lead the entire globe and all the other countries are going to follow us for science technology and innovation related solutions and therefore in that particular very very historically important globally important travel both of us should travel together so this collection series should pave way to get initiated with that kind of a historically important globally to be celebrated successful journey and uh, we are ready from our end we the leaders are ready and we are just asking all of you to join this particular movement this should become like a movement friends in the country after 1947 we came up with a number of number of revolutions green revolution took place white revolution took place blue revolution took place industrial revolution took place all the revolutions took place now we are we from csr we are coming up we are introducing another new revolution we call it as purple revolution which is nothing but a roma related purple lavender cultivation related revolution by means of which indian farmers are now getting more than 2.5 times of their income which is the dream of the national leadership the honorable prime minister of the country all the time all the time he keeps telling that the farmers income should be doubled because if at all we are able to keep the farmers in their happy mood then only we can also ensure that food security of the country is assured and we can think about the rest of the science technology and innovation related things so days are not there in no longer there in the history of india that we will be really looking for somebody else for our food related requirements because today we are food i would say at the requirement of food or our the amount of food that we are producing it is more than which is required for india so food deficit days are gone now it is a food surplus india so how it was able to get this kind of a thing from good food deficiency to food surplus the travel it took place only through science technology and innovation that's why friends i'm telling if at all you want to do any change if at all you want to make any revolution you have to believe in science technology and innovation and you have to accept it as a very silent movement because you have to accept it wholeheartedly so you have to think in that direction if all of us start thinking in the same direction any idea that is getting conceived with the similar kind of a thought process from more than 100 people more than 1000 people more than million people definitely it will see the light and therefore friends make use of this opportunity 
Let us start thinking in one direction. All of us, we have only one target, which is nothing but to position India in the global arena, not as a follower, but as a scientific leader. And that should be the slogan. Therefore, I just put a request to the Vice Chancellor, Madam, before you start this colloquium series, every time, at least you ask them, or at least you just remind them by telling this slogan. Let us put our mind, heart and soul and our 200% efforts in science, technology and innovation and position India in the global arena for its leadership. If you make this as a slogan for your collective series, the more and more you think about it, the more and more you talk about it, the more and more you munch on it, I think it will take a shape. Because our tradition teaches us that way only. Vedas, really they say that the more you chant them, the more you think about them, the more you pray, the more you meditate, things will happen. Because nature is a good listener. Nature listens to human being. Of course it is not vice versa because we human beings, we never listen to nature. Whereas nature is always, always simple, humble, generous and nature listens to us and therefore let us just put in all our efforts and leave the results to nature. Nature will abundantly, abundantly bless us and that will help us to work together and we all will position India as a leader in the global arena for its science, technology and innovation. And this is the only message I just wanted to give you and I wish this collective series every success and give me another 15 minutes wherein I will just showcase to start with. If at all you want to work with industry, what are the areas you can touch upon? I will just show, go through a few slides. Initially, I thought that I can take you through a travel with a technical talk. But after listening to Madam and others, I thought that more than a technical talk, you need a kind of SOP. That's why I just shared all my thought process as SOP. But this is nothing but a case study that I will just showcase. For a country like India, few securities are important. Food security, water security, energy security, healthcare security, and strategic security. For any country to reach the level of a developed nation from a developing nation status, these five securities are equally important. And today I will touch upon one of the securities, which is energy security and its Indian landscape. I just will cover in 15 minutes and I really appreciate your tolerance.